I've been thinking about this notion of, you know, we need adversity in order to be resilient. And I 100% believe that. And at the same time, I also believe that if you don't know how to be resilient and your reaction to adversity is shame, uh, you know, like self-blame, um, being re really negative to yourself, that's where the danger lies. So I'm just reading this book on sports psychology and <clears throat> it's reminding me of like, you know how you see coaches being tough on people, like sports coaches? And yes, you must be tough on them. However, if your players or your coaches are not, they don't know how to transform that adversity into resilience, what you're actually doing is creating like a negative cycle. So this is where I'm kind of feeling a little bit, I don't know, in a conflict or I don't know what it is. I'm still processing this as I make this. Um, but it's almost like you've got to find that sweet spot. And as a coach, sports coach, mental coach, whatever, person, a mentor, a role model, whatever it is where you are guiding someone, you know, it's really, I think it's really important for us to model what it looks like to transform adversity into resilience. Because if you don't have those tools, if you've never witnessed it, if it's never been modeled to you, and the only thing that's been modeled to you is a negative spiral of shame, a negative spiral of, you know, putting yourself down when you're doing something wrong, then you're never going to actually come out of that spiral because that's all you know. Um... So that's my thought for today. I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, yeah, I just, I really do believe that we need both. It's both and, it's not one or the other, you know. And at the same time, like uh, coaching people, sports coaches who are very encouraging and who are not strict, you know, that's also wonderful. Uh, and at the same time, they also need to be a part of the modeling of resistant, uh, resilience when a player will experience adversity because it's going to happen. There are no guarantees. Uh, sometimes you can do everything right and you still don't get the outcome that you wanted. And if all your hopes and dreams are attached to that outcome, then there's going to be a crash. And not to say that you shouldn't have those hopes and dreams. Again, you know, like my brain will automatically go into that extreme um, and that's just one of the irrational thinking patterns that we all have, it's a distorted thinking pattern. Um, but you know, if we, if we don't have both, then we are not like holistically living. Like if we, if we're not paying attention to the enjoyment of the process, we can be disappointed if we lose. We can obviously have all that like assortment of emotion that comes with like disappointment or being upset or um, anything like that. But if we don't have both, if we don't know how to process it and come out of it and go, okay, I've processed those emotions. I have, without telling myself that I'm terrible or that there's something wrong with me or, you know, all that stuff. And once I've done that and I've regulated my emotions, then now I can move on to the next thing. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting thing. So please, you know, I'm, I'm spitballing here, trying to start a, a conversation. So what are your thoughts on what I've just said? Like, do you disagree or do you agree? Do you think, do you know of something uh, that have you experienced something where you're like, actually, yeah, you know, I've gone through adversity and, you know, I was model only negative um, role modeling and it was a negative spiral and I found a way out of it. I'd love to know if, if you've experienced that. Um, yeah, please let me know.